I think the biggest shock story in rugby this season was your announcement that you were leaving Harlequins. And after 16 years of service, we heard that you got your marching orders in a matter of minutes. So can you please talk us through what happened on that day? Yeah, look, I kind of have to be a bit careful because um, obviously um, the club weren't too happy with, with um, what I said. Um, yeah, look, what happened is what I, what I said. Um, and there's a couple of reason what, reasons why I said it. Obviously, one was kind of hurt with how, how it happened. But two, also, I want, I want um, the club to learn so that things like this don't happen again. Um, you know, there's going to be other guys that leave in the future. And, you know, I feel like that there's a lot of learners can be taken from my situation. Um, I think it's important to do that. I think also, I think it's important for people to understand, you know, this isn't old school rugby anymore. And I think, I think people on the outside just lean on the, the whole romantic side of rugby, you know, the loyalty, the respect, all those sort of values that I guess used to, used to be a massive part of, of rugby, um, you know, back in the, I guess, the olden days. Um, and I think people still lean on that when it's on the player, but when it's on other things like the clubs, it's, it's just business. Um, so I think it's important to me to get that across that, um, yeah, that's fine, it's a business, but, you know, when, it, when a player does something to look after themselves, we can't then, you know, so going back to these romantic, old school values of respect, loyalty. Um, I take uh, someone like Sink, for example, grew up through the academy, loved Quinns, um, and he moved on, you know, to to earn some good money somewhere else. I guess was a was a big factor of it, if we're if we're all honest and. You know, you read oh, loyalty and all that thing. Quinn's gave you gave you the chance, all that sort of stuff. But it's a business at the end of the day, and it's got to work both sides for me. So, um, if we're going to say it's a business, it's got to work both sides. We can't be then leaning on old school values and romantic values um, that we don't talk about. So, it's important for me to sort of open pe open people's eyes to that. And I think something like football, I think there's a better balance. You know, everyone knows where they stand. When rugby, I think it's still a bit old school in that in that regard. If, if I'm making any sense, can you? So yeah, and I think for me as well. Sorry to, to interrupt. I think you know, look, everyone at some point gets uh, moved along, but I think there's a a way of doing it and a process of doing it, which I don't feel was was um, was done right in my situation. And can um, you can you share, Mike, um, the, what the reason Gustard gave you for your dismissal was? Um, it was uh, money. Can we not I call think. it that? Can we not call it dismissal? I think that's unfair. What word would you prefer, Jamie? <laughs> uh, so, oh. Moved along. <laughs> not that one. Not that one. Moved along. He wasn't dismissed. He just wasn't offered a contract. You weren't offered the contract, Mike. You weren't offered to stay, were you? They just said thank yeah, well, you very much. Am I right? Or yeah. And I think it they, was, didn't um, they didn't lowball you. Um, no, that wasn't until later on. But okay, those sort okay. of things I can't. You can't. Well, you, can listen, you, can, yeah, you can't. I can't, That's fine. I can't really go. I don't want to really go into yeah, too much detail because I don't want to tip yeah. the tap for with the club, and I don't want that. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, Laurie, Laurie Darlingpool um, has come out and said what he said, which is fine. You know, he can do that like I did, but I'm not going to then start going back and forth. Um, so you can listen to what he yeah. said. So was it? Was it just like? Did it just feel like really just clinical? You know, because. It, it's hard, isn't it? You've been at the club such a long time. You're kind of pillar of Harlequins, you know. Certainly yourself, Rob Shaw, Danny. You know these guys have been. You guys have been in the forefront of what Quins have all been about. You're the blood and soul of the club. Do you just feel that that conversation was just large? Cheers, mate. Thanks. <laughs> it was just uber clinical, and that, I guess that's what you're referring to when you say it needs to be done in a proper way. Yeah, I think I think it's that. It's it's. Um how it led to that meeting. There was other things that went on which didn't really sit well with me for the service I gave. Um, you know, just things like having to chase for a long time. Um, there was supposed to be a meeting with, with Guzzi before that, which didn't happen because, um, for whatever reason, um, and then moved on to another day. And if it was that important to them, you know, it would have been moved. It would have been yeah, done then and there. You know, 
Um, I guess, I guess it's, yeah, I guess it's, it's players, to all, all you can, yeah, I can understand it's that, Bradley. Completely understand that. I guess as players, all you want is transparency, isn't it? I think, you know, as yeah. a, we do, as players, you understand it's a business. If you're going to get moved on, well, so be it. But tell me early. Tell me early so that I can make decisions. I can go look into other clubs. Don't yeah. drag it, drag people along, especially someone like yourself who's given 16 years service to the club. Well, Mike, for someone who gave 16 years to the club, did you, the way they were handling it, did you almost get a sense that something was kind of up by the way they were treating you? I kind of felt something to, towards the end of that restart season. Because um, I asked Longy, for example, Sean Long, he left obviously at the end of that season. And I asked him, was, is, there something, is there something with the older lads? Because I'm kind of feeling something. For some reason, I'm quite good at reading situations and, and environments. And I could sense something with the coaches or with Guzzy. So I kind of felt something, but I never ever thought you know, I thought I was playing well and my stats were showing that. I thought, you know, I'm doing good stuff around the club and we've got a young back three um, with a lot of inexperience and I'm helping those, you know, people like Lou Liner, who's come on massively. I've been sort of working with a mentoring and he's come out and said nice things and he doesn't have to do that. But, you know, for him to say that, you know, is, is really nice of him. You know, all those things, you, you kind of think, oh, yeah, you know, maybe, you know, I think I'm going to be kept on. So, to hear that in that meeting was a, a massive blow, you know, and then sort of to be left over the weekend um, with no one really to talk to apart from my wife, who's now stressed and upset and not really sure about our future. And my dad, who's, you know, the last time he was at the club was for a bar ceremony where he's hearing, you know, you always have a place at the club and all that sort of thing. I've got to deal with all that on my own. Um, you know, it's tough and I'm not saying that's for people to feel sorry for me and all that sort of stuff, but it just goes back to the, the processes I'm talking about. Um, we have one of the best welfare liaison officers you could imagine, but he wasn't, he wasn't in that process for whatever reason. He didn't even know it was going to happen. Such a big meeting. You know, it's a big meeting for anyone, but for someone that's been there for their whole adult life for 17 years, that's a huge meeting. You need someone like that straight after me to talk to, to check in on you, all those things. But where, whereas I was left for a whole weekend to process that, to deal with that, with a young family, to speak to my dad who has no idea, like, has no idea how to process that. Because like I said, the last time he spoke to anyone at the club, he's hearing all these things at a bar ceremony. So, you know, I'm having to deal with all that. And then I come in on a Monday and, you know, I feel, I felt like embarrassed. I felt like, where do I fit in? What am I doing here? Like all those sort of things as a, as a player, you, all those insecurities you feel and you're like, I don't, I don't really know how to be in this environment anymore because I, I don't feel any, like I've got any value, any worth. Um, you have all those sort of things on top of you. So, you know, it's hard yeah. to explain, but that's, what, that's yeah. kind of what was going on. And, and again, I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm not saying it for people to feel sorry for me. I'm not, I'm not doing that at all because people, in much worse situations that, than I am. And there's, you know, people that um, don't get to say what's happened to them, don't have that platform to do that. You know, I'm lucky that I, I can speak to some of the day in the and, and get that out there. Yeah. And I'm lucky enough to have a job and, you know, that's given me that kind of lifeline, I guess. So to keep, um, continue playing at the age of 35. So, you um, know, I just wanted, just wanted to let people know and, and make sure that people knew my side of the story, I guess. And Mike, I know this is probably a bit of an awkward one, but when Gustar got fired, did Quinns ever consider like going back on your dismissal and signing you again? Because you've been playing so well. Like despite all the circumstances, you've been really like just on form. Yeah, so um, no is the answer until I, uh, a week before my Newcastle announcement, they came back with something. Um, You'd, you'd already it, signed the contract, big boy. You'd already signed it, the contract. Yeah. How did you that's feel it. then when they came back so late in the day? Like you've signed with another club and then they offer you something. Was it like, was it a really good offer that would have potentially enticed you back? Or were you just like, no, I'm done now? <laughs> a bit of both really, as in it wasn't the good and I was done. But it's hard because when things like this happen, all that, feelings you have for the club it's kind of sucked out of you you know like I, I would argue that there's no one that has or had the feelings I had for Harlequin 
you know, the love, the the loyalty. I was going to ask you that, Mike. How do you feel? Yeah, how do you feel now, a few weeks on, and how do you how do you treat your your daily life at the club now, and how do you feel emotionally when you go into games? Obviously, it'd be amazing to win the Premiership of the club now, but a few weeks on, and you can reflect what are your emotions like now and your feelings towards the club. Yeah, look, I think firstly for me, you know, I've got a job to do. I get paid very well to play rugby and, and be a professional and um, I also hold my hold, you know hold myself to, to high standards you know that you know about me doc so I'm not going to let these sort of situations um, you know impact that so I'll continue to do that but also I feel like I have a, um, a massive job to do for the for the guys around me in terms of the players um, because I want them to be able to feel what it feels like to to um, lift that trophy at the end of the season. Like I said, we're in a great position. So if whatever I can do to to allow them to have that chance, I'm going to do. And also for the supporters, you know, especially the ones that have um, always backed me, the, the ones that send me such nice messages. Now I want them to, um, you know, after a tough period, especially in the, the COVID times, I want them to um, be celebrating at the end of the season. So I, I think guess. Man, that for me, that's the mark of the man right there. You know, like. You've had all this crap from the club. You've done everything you can and, you know, you, you get screwed over by them, but you're still there. You want to do well for the fans. You want to do well for the players, you know, that are there already. And I know when you get a low ball offer after that, the easy option is maybe to take it. But like you said, mate, you've got plenty more in you to, to give. So why not go and give that to another club and, and try another challenge? So that's what sometimes I think the coaches miss is, and definitely the people above the coaches, the guys in the higher up positions that don't see the everyday stuff you do with the younger players, with the culture around the club. And it's people like you in clubs that drive that culture. And I think that's one thing you never want to lose in rugby. You want, don't want to lose that, that type of thing. So, mate, more for Newcastle. I think let, let them have you and then they'll get the benefits out of that, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah no, I'll second I, I, that, mate. I appreciate that, guys. No, I really do. Um, means a lot, especially coming from you two guys. Um, but yeah, look, now I've got my head around everything and, you know, like I said, Dino gave me a lifeline. Like, I'm really, really excited about going up there, you know, obviously nervous because it's like going to a new school. And like I said, all, my whole adult, I, I had a life has uh, been spent at one club, but I'm really looking forward to joining that environment um, because from what I'm hearing, you know, they're, they're um, um, a really close uh, bunch of lads really tough resilient bunch of lads um northern grit so mate northern grit that's it yeah so i want to come and add to that and i, I will always also think uh, i can imagine some people will think i'm crazy but you know why can't they go and you know achieve things and win things as a group i'm looking at them the toughness and resilience that they have as a, as a squad um the spine of their team and i'm thinking you know they could really um Add some history to that that club that they've already got, you know, back in Andrew Johnny Wilkinson days. They they won, didn't they? They won the trophy. So why can't we go and add to that? Um, and that's what I'm looking forward to to add into their group. Um, hopefully, add into their group and um, see where we can take things. Only two hours from Glasgow, mate. If you want to nip up for a beer, there you go. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, that's a great invite. So yeah. No, and Mike, good. it's been interesting because I think social media for a change kind of came to your defense. It was they were defending your honor, and one in particular was from um, Mike Phillips. Did you see his tweet? <laughs> yeah, it was kind of a, a nice one, but then a little little um, yeah. dig at the same Shut time. Shut the knife in there. Shut the knife in there, didn't yeah. it? Oh, stop. I was actually yeah, surprised but... he shared um, a picture of someone other than himself in the tweet. So <laughs> that blew my mind. But like, did yeah. that now? I suppose over the last while, like it has been really tough. But did that bring a little bit of a smile to your face, Mike? Oh, of course, you've got to laugh about those sort of things, haven't you? Um, yeah. I think a young Mike Brown wouldn't have laughed at that. I yeah. think you would have reacted differently, but that's the mark of you. I think you've changed. <laughs> Do you reckon? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I think, um, yeah, I think being going through these sort of things, you do kind of change anyway. You know, going through the heartache of not making a World Cup, going through this sort of thing with Quinns um, does change you. But yeah, you've got, you got to laugh, haven't you? And, you know, yeah. he's, he's a funny character and... Um, I've not really met him off the field, so it'd be funny one day to meet, especially after that little dig. Um, but yeah, yeah. It, I don't think I'll nice. just change you, mate. I think you'll be the making of it, and I wish you the very best in Newcastle. I really do. I think you, uh, you're right. A good group up there. You could win some silverware. 
we will let you go. And thanks for coming on again for a quick chat with us. Best of luck for the rest of the season um, and for next year in Newcastle. Uh, so thanks again, Mike. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me and uh, take care, everyone. Cheers, Brian. Good luck, mate. Cheers, guys. Bye. Bye.